Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to focus on the front hall closet. It's not too bad. I did do some purging earlier in, in the season, about a couple months ago, but I needed to do some more uh, tweaking. Um, there needs to be some updates. It's gonna have a slight makeover, so you'll see what I mean once I get into it. I'm just gonna remove the doors and any remaining contents in the closet before I get started. So here's a little bit of my design dilemma or challenge um, is this shelf sort of meets up with this bulkhead, uh, this wall. Um, it doesn't extend past it and I need a little bit of a deeper shelf. So I'm just trying to work out in my head how to extend it but not just have this edge sticking out. I want it to look pretty neat when I'm done. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm going to work it out. So this closet was to have a small update. I wanted a deeper shelf so my baskets would fit properly. It actually annoyed me that they would hang off the edge about an inch. A little see, I don't know, maybe. But anyways, uh, the shelf was pretty, pretty rough. It was a pretty rough shape. And I also wanted to switch out the dated builder rod with something more modern anyway. Um, the rod, that was an easy part. I had some figuring out to do with the shelf. So I think I'm gonna need to get some shopping done. Yes, found what I was looking for. This is a stain grade solid spruce wood panel that's already sanded. It's super easy to work with. I had used it before for one of my clients. I'd used it for shelving in their home office and I knew this would be perfect for this install, except it's only three feet in length and I need it to be a little longer. Okay, so this one is gonna work. It is much wider than I need. I can get the depth of my shelf, which will be 11 inches, and the remaining width I can cut to make new shelf supports. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can utilize this entire 16 inch by 72 inch wood panel to make all my cuts. Love it. I had planned to make this a really small update, but I can't ignore the cracks that I'm seeing as well. So I'm gonna have to fill in those areas and pretty much make the closet as good as new. I'm using drywall tape with joint compound to cover the inside cracks of this corner. Now if I only use joint compound, eventually the crack would reappear. And cracks typically appear as the home settles or when there's temperature fluctuations. While the compound is drying, I can focus outside of the closet by turning my attention to the shelf. I need to get it measured and cut, and I'm also going to need to um, measure and cut for the shelf supports. Remember I mentioned figuring out how I'll work this shelf around the bulkhead? Well, what should be two simple cuts took some maneuvering since we're using a miter saw. That's not the tool that you wanna be using here. I think a circular saw would have been much more appropriate and we would have saved a ton of time trying to figure out how to do this, but it's done and this is what the shelf looks like. Okay, don't do what I'm doing here. Uh, use a clean rag before you paint to get rid of any sawdust, okay? Just don't, don't do that. <laughs> I'm using leftover primer that I use in my home office makeover. I use the primer on the shelves and the furniture and it helps to seal the wood before painting. So this is why I actually decided on getting a wider shelf support because the new rod support is wider than the previous shelf support. 
and the bottom hole where the third screw would need to be placed is way too close to the edge and it actually would have split the wood if I tried to secure the new rod support properly in place. So I needed to get a wider shelf support. Now back into the closet where I get a chance to finally sand down the drywall compound that I applied earlier and just make sure that the walls are nice and smooth before I start painting. These are some items that came out of the coat closet. Now the shoes are not going back in and neither are those boots. Those are getting purged. What also needs purging is four boxes of shoe protectants. I don't even know why we had so many. They were hardly even being used. I mean, look, four boxes. These are gonna be purged and we're going down to like one box. Like, I'm not kidding. We, we're getting rid of this. I'm getting rid of this. And underneath this pile of clothes are my coats that I've already purged on top are the husband's. He needs to go through some of that stuff. There's uh, quite a few items there that he's not wearing. So that's going to reduce the amount of items going back into the closet. So nothing too exciting about getting started with painting in here. It's already been prepped and I'm just throwing a coat of paint on the ceiling and just decided that, hmm, maybe I need to do something with the closet doors. So off comes the header and the footer. I think I'm going to paint them, everything. I mean, did I really need to add more work? I mean, well, why not? It wouldn't be fun if I didn't add more work, right? So before I actually get painted with the header footer as well as the doors, I need to do a little uh, light sanding just to make sure that the spray paint is going to adhere properly. I plan on hitting it with about two coats of spray paint. Uh, one coat first, let it dry for about 10 minutes and then add the second coat. Yep, you'll be seeing me doing this for a bit, in and out and in and out, in between projects. So I'm back in here now trying to finish up painting these walls while the uh, header and footer are drying. Just so you know, I didn't actually have to purchase any more paint. This is paint that was left over from the home office makeover. The paint for the walls is what I used on the furniture and the paint for the shelf is what I used on the office shelves. Spray painting the sliding glass doors is a little bit more of an involved setup. I'm going to mask off the area, so essentially covering up the areas that I do not want the spray paint to get on. I, I don't want it to be looking messy. So even though I'm not going to be seeing the inside of the closet door, I want it to be pretty neat. So the best way I can do that is by covering up those areas that I don't want the spray to go on to, and this way when I take the paper off, everything is going to look really, really neat. I've also taped around the gliders as well to protect that from overspray and oh, I forgot to take off the bumper pad. I'll, I'm going to replace that with some new ones. Just with the header and the footer, the same thing applies here. Just going to give the sliding glass doors uh, a bit of a scuff up so that I can get really good paint adhesion to the surface. And that's just on the white edges here that you see that I want to cover in black spray paint. I have to say that this was like the perfect day to be out here doing this type of project. Uh, you don't want a lot of wind when you're spray painting and uh, it was it was just wonderful. Like it was just the mildest day that we had in early spring. So it was perfect timing for me to be out here and choosing to do this project during this time as well. So it was absolutely fabulous day to get this project done. I flipped the sliding door over and I'm just going to cover up the glass part of it in the same manner that I did on the other side. Now that the paint is dry, I'm using a sharp blade to score as close to the trim as possible. I want to ensure that as I'm peeling off the tape, it doesn't lift off any paint from the trim. Ooh, it's looking so good. Okay, exactly what I hoped for. I don't know how, but some paint got underneath the paper, so I'm just using a, a blade to clean up all the overspray.
I'm just using a vinegar and water solution, nothing crazy, just to remove any traces of spray paint residue. Now I just need to cut the shelf supports to size to accommodate the shelf and to also have the rod supports be able to be secure to it. To install the shelf supports, I'm marking where the studs are located so I can mount the support directly to the wall studs. Now, although the shelf and baskets don't carry much weight, the weight of the coats on the rod need a strong support. I'm using a nail gun to tack the supports in place before it gets fastened with screws. And I also put the shelf in place to make sure everything was leveled before mounting the support on the opposite side of the wall. I've already drilled pilot holes before driving in any screws. This will help to prevent the wood from splitting and cracking and less of a force of me trying to drive the screw in. I'm using a countersink drill bit which creates a shallow hole so the screw head can just hide below the surface. And I'm going to cover it up later with some wood filler so you won't even see the screw head. I already had some leftover wood filler, so I'm going to use that to cover up the screw heads. But I did have to cut, cut it open because it was not properly mixed. I just could not massage it in the container. So it was a little runny. And now I'm even realizing a putty knife is working way better than my finger. It didn't take long for the putty to dry at all. I probably left it for about 20 minutes or so. I don't even think I needed to wait until it was fully dry before sanding. Before I paint the supports, I'm going to use painter's tape to surround the edges. This way I don't get paint on the wall. I use painter tape in areas where I know that freestyling with a brush is a little risky and will cause me to make a mess. Better for me to spend time masking than to touch up messes. We are in the home stretch now. The rod supports can now get secured in place. And I was going to use the previous supports as a template, but they got tossed out during a hasty cleanup. Yeah, I know, my need for clean. So anyways, I'm measuring out from the wall to about center of the closet for the ideal spot to mount the rod support. Now, you can use your hanger as a guide too. Make sure there is enough hanging space in the front and back so that clothes neither rub on the wall or the closet door. So I'm in my stride ready to put the last support in place only to realize that the package contained two screws, not three. Okay, so rather than being bummed about it because I mean I was quite annoyed, I was fortunately able to find one in the garage that would work. It was in the tool chest. The screw head is white but I have a fix for that. Before I cut the rod, I'm measuring from rod support to rod support on the surface, not from the wood support. I wanna make sure that the rod is not too tight, but just enough room so it slips right into the support. 
I'll be using a metal hacksaw blade to cut the metal rod. Now, this is my first time, so I'm a newbie at this, so I'm just using the masking tape to prevent me from accidentally scratching the rod with the blade. It took me a few minutes to get the hang of it, but I, I did pretty well. <laughs> A little victory move there. <laughs> Feeling so good about that. Finally, I can get to put things back into the closet. The shelf looks great. The rod is perfectly installed. The header's going in, the footer's going in, the glass sliding doors are going back in. Everything's painted black. Woo! Yeah, this was, this was great. Well worth it. I'm putting my Cricut machine in action to create a label for my new shoe care bin. Told you I was gonna purge a lot of that stuff out. Yeah, now I can fit what will actually be used in one bin. I'm so glad that I was able to reuse the baskets and I didn't have to purchase anything different. Just by widening the shelf gave me all the room that I needed. By the way, this jute bag is a perfect storage for face masks. It's conveniently located near the front door, so there's no forgetting to grab a face mask before heading out. And if you do forget, it's right there to just grab one quickly. I love, love, love this umbrella stand. It's neat and compact storage for all my umbrellas. Hey! So how could I not have painted these sliding glass doors? They turned out so well. They provide this front entryway with an updated modern look, a minor enhancement that makes a huge impact. I'd love to know what you think, so please share your comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up for more DIY and home decor ideas. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any upcoming videos, which are coming soon.